Miracy. A result can be disappointing. That doesn't mean that we or I am disappointed with the process that went into creating that result. Hello, I'm Cynthia Lamb, and you're listening to Behind the Launch, the show that explores the ups and downs of launching a product or a service. In this series so far, we've been excited about a million dollar launch and disappointed about a launch that fell far short of expectations. We've regrouped and debriefed, and in the last episode, we heard from the Miracy team about how they manage the tension and ambiguity of launch time. Actually, two launches one in September of 2021 and February of 2022. Today, we're going to explore the results of those launches and gain some insight into how Miracy determines a successful launch. And just as a reminder, while revenue is always important, as Miracy CEO Danny Eney says, the main purpose of those two launches was to test hypotheses coming out of the disappointing launch in May of 2021. You know, the results of the May launch were underwhelming. We came out of that with hypotheses as to, okay, here's what I think might have gone wrong. And then we gathered some data and we checked our hypotheses. It's a good thing we did because it turns out a lot of our hypotheses were unsupported by data. Before we dive into the results of those launches, let's establish what constitutes a successful Miracy launch. As Bumi Patak, COO of Miracy says, there are a number of factors. At the very basic level, if we hit our target, the launch has been successful. So when we have a launch, we always have a target. Did we hit the target or not? But just hitting the target or not doesn't tell us, you know, how well we did. You know, it's possible we hit the target because the market was super favorable. So even if you do a terrible job at launching, you're going to get a certain number of folks in your program. And the flip side of that is also that, you know, if you didn't hit your target, but the market conditions were super unfavorable, and all the other launches at that time didn't perform well because of market conditions, the financial target doesn't give you a complete picture of how well you did. But that is still one thing that we look at because we do have cash flow targets and depending on whether we hit the targets or not, it has implications down the line. And beyond the financials, what are the other factors? We look at a number of things. We look at how well we converted people from our launch list into our paid offer. So you know, one of the reasons we could have exceeded our target is because we had a really big launch list or we had a bigger launch list than we expected, which is great, right? So on that side, we can be like, okay, you know what? Partner performance was really great. And so what did we do to support partners this time? And we should continue to do that again next time. So what are the lessons learned? What could we have done better? So that's one aspect we'd look at. When it comes to the conversion side of things, you know, do we execute the launch as we had planned it? So from a tech perspective, from a copy perspective, We wanted to do all of these things. Were we able to do them successfully without any glitches? That's sort of like the the baseline. So this was our launch plan. How faithfully were we able to execute our uh, launch plan? Another factor is the offer. How well did our offer resonate with people? So if we have a lot of people who are confused about the offer, if we have a lot of people who are questioning sort of the value of the offer, a lot of people saying, whoa, that's really expensive. That tells us that we didn't do a good job either creating the offer or communicating the offer in a way that really landed. On the flip side, if you know if we're having great conversations with people, they're eager to sign up, you know, it means that we really hit the target when it came to creating an offer that people really want at this moment in time. So how did Miracy do with its test launches? According to Mary Williams, then Director of Education, there were early positive indicators for the September 2021 launch. So there was kind of this early like rush because some people wanted a bonus that was delivered for early bird cart close. And now there's a few more people. Well, I've put time on my calendar late because we had such a rush of people who suddenly wanted calls. Our day one, we had almost 600 people live on the call at the same time. It was massive. It's huge. It's awesome. And and I think it was great because they got to see that oh, look, like even though I'm in this sea full of people, I still feel like I'm being seen and heard. And I've heard that comment from them. That's satisfying because it tells me that we did our job right. Despite the early positive signs, the September launch fell short of its financial target. I asked Danny Eney how he felt about the results. 
I felt good about those results. Actually, I should rephrase. You know, the numbers came in and I wasn't honestly sure how I should be feeling about these numbers. Right? Did we make as much money as we wanted to make? No. You know, we came in under on that front. Not in a way that was problematic, but just in a way that like, you know, I'm used to seeing bigger numbers on some of our promotions. But then when you start looking at that in the context of all the things that we tested, the number of people we actually presented this offer to, you know, you do that analysis and you look apples to apples because we're just not as good at doing that mental math as we think we are. I was like, oh, okay, this actually paints a really good picture. We tested lowering the price of the offer. We found that that really didn't seem to make a substantial difference. We found that the direction of the messaging seemed to be very resonant. So that was positive. So the numbers weren't great for the September launch, but we crossed some assumptions off the list and got some good direction for where to aim the arrow for the February launch. Here's Danny with more about that. So we did a big test launch internally in February, kind of testing out all of our ideas and assumptions based on you know, what we tried that didn't get the results we wanted in May and what we tried differently that didn't get the results we wanted in September that we learned from. And so we took a whole bunch of new approaches. We tested them in February, and that test was very successful. I asked Danny, in what ways was it successful? In terms of, you know, essentially any launch is a function of inputs and then outputs. So how many people do you get their initial attention for the launch because they opt in to get something or watch something or attend something? And then what does that translate to in terms of the general felt experience along the way? And then most importantly, the outputs, how many people buy, what are the results, et cetera. And it was a small internal test. We had uh, not a huge number of people that we presented it to. And the outcomes in terms of sales were just very good, both in terms of volume of sales and in terms of dollar values of sales. So we literally like tripled and quadrupled the results we saw in, in some of our previous launches. Wow. So how did that feel? Good. I mean, you know, here's the thing. After our May launch, while I was not thrilled about the results, I don't think I was despondent either. And in the same way, I mean, you know, I'm pleased, I'm happy with the results, but I'm not like, you know, overjoyed, life is amazing. It's like it's all it's all data, it's all inputs, it's all something that helps you learn and evolve and improve and get better. So, you know, I like winning more than I like not winning, but you know, the core is to learn either way. And that's what keeps things interesting. Helping us to win in February of 2022 was our audience, says Tanya Kobu, who was community champion at Miracy in May of 2020 and 2021. As Tanya says, they had the savvy to recognize a great offer. What I saw, I saw a much less desperate audience. So in May 2021, you know, people were writing in and it was very clear, at least to me, that, I mean, they were looking at gambling versus investing. And, you know, Danny is always very explicit on, you know, you need to think about how much you can afford to invest. And, you know, but these were folks who were like, I remember one person in particular was like, I'm on social security, which, you know, here in the US, that's like a retirement plan, sort of. And, but it's very fixed income, not very high at all. You know, and they were like, I'm willing to do this. And I'm like, that is a bad idea. And it's not because I don't believe in them, right? But I know, you know, the on ramp you need to get a course off the ground. And if you're starting from a place where you don't have, you know, a runway of finances, then that's tough. But it was, you know, I saw a lot of like get rich quick sort of minded emails in May 2021. And fast forwarding to February 2022, these were folks who they had already invested in programs. I talked to several people who had spent $10,000, $15,000 in what they viewed as a similar program in the last couple of years. You know, they had banked all their pandemic dollars into these higher ticket courses and they left them unsatisfied, but also a little bit wiser. And so they recognized how good the offer was, right? They recognized like, oh, I paid $10,000 for a course that didn't have half of this. The offer was landing, our internal customers and clients were excited, and so was the entire Miracy team. 
the disappointment and concern were gone and all eyes were trained on May of 2022. That's when we would launch our newly minted hybrid course university to a large audience. I'll tell you all about that next time, but for now, here's Danny with the final word. So we're going into May and of course, you know, markets change and things evolve and there's always an element of uncertainty and, you know, will Mercury be in retrograde when we open our cart and all that kind of stuff. But I, I don't think that's actually a thing, but I'm going to knock on wood as I say that. Uh, <laughs> but I'm feeling optimistic. I think we've kind of explored a lot of ideas. We have some really innovative approaches that we're going to be bringing to this coming launch. We tested as much of it as we could test and the results have all been very favorable. So I'm feeling optimistic. I'm Cynthia Lamb, and you've been listening to Behind the Launch. Behind the Launch is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Making It. I wrote and produced this episode. Jeff Govertson created order out of the interviews, and Andrew Chapman gave me a second ear. Danny Eaney is our executive producer, and to make sure you don't miss great episodes coming up on Behind the Launch, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please give us a starred review. It is the best way to help us get these ideas out there to more people. Thanks, and we will see you next time on Behind the Launch.